Well, good evening, y'all, and welcome back to Apron Strings. We're going to do something a little bit different today. Well, different for some of you. Some of you may have already made it. We're going to make another Christmas goodie. And instead of a fruit cake, we're going to make a Christmas fruit cake pie. It's similar to a pecan pie. It's got all the ingredients of a fruit cake in it, but it's baked in a pie shell. So I'm going to get y'all over to the butcher block and we're going to get the fruit and nuts mixed and in the base of the the pie shell, in the pie shell for the base of the pie. Then we'll get over to the KitchenAid and whip up what goes on top of it and I'll just show y'all how to do it. Come on okay, over. I have red cherries. I'm going to put all of the ingredients in this bowl and toss it and then I'm going to put it into the uh, pie shell. I have dates and the measurements will be at the end of the video. Pineapple, and all this is your candied fruit cakes that mix. Golden raisins. Toss that just a snitch. We've got a few green cherries that we're going to put in there. And I forgot to cut those. Let me find my snips. This is the easiest way to do it. Use your kitchen shears and just get in there and snip them in half. Did everything but the green ones. I guess green means go and I thought they'd already took care of theirself. Okay, I'm going to toss that. Now we have a cup of pecans and half of them I've chopped and half of them will go on the top. So let's get those mixed in. And that kind of helps to separate your fruit too. And I used uh, just whole dates, not the ones that are coated in sugar and chopped. And again, use those kitchen snips and you can just snip your dates up and quick and easy. Okay, I've got one pie crust and no, I didn't make my pie crust, all these did. And I just rolled it out as much larger, because this is a 10 inch pie plate and it called for probably a 9, but I was going to make it a little bit bigger. So all you want to do is put your fruit in the bottom. Fruit, nuts, raisins, all of that stuff goes in first. And just get it as evenly as you can because you're going to be putting goodie on top of it to cook like the the pecan pie, and then we're going to decorate the top with some pecans and cherries. Okay, now, I'm going to get y'all over to the mixer for a minute while we mix up what goes on the top, and then we'll be back over here to finish now it off. I've softened my butter, and it's six tablespoons. I'm just going to kind of whiz it just a little bit, and then I'm going to add to that a half cup of brown sugar. And we'll mix this until it's creamy, so I'll bring y'all back when that part's done. It's creamed pretty well, but I'm going to scrape it because you always have some butter that just was stubborn and didn't get up in there in the game with everything else. So let's whiz that just a little bit more, then we're going to add three eggs and beat that until it's very creamy. I keep saying beat it till it's creamy. Well, think thick peanut butter. Thick, creamy peanut butter. All blended well, but it's not runny, see? It's just, can you see the consistency? Just creamed. So now we're going to add our eggs to it and make a good mixture and then we'll add our spices and our, uh, we're going to add the eggs and then we're going to add our uh, Cairo, our white corn syrup and our spices. I'm going to go ahead and drizzle in my syrup. Now 
you always want to strike your container really well because you could leave a couple of tablespoons of syrup in the whatever you had it in and that could make a difference in how your stuff turns out. I'm going to, some of this is hopped up on the side here. Now I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm just going to whip this until it's all blended really well. Okay, I'm going to add my cloves, ginger, and nutmeg. And I'm going to get just a pinch of salt and put in it. Now a pinch is what you can get between your thumb and your forefinger. That's not much. Blend my spices in. Okay, that's what's going to make the um, pudding like like the middle of a pecan pie. Okay, let's get back over to the butcher block and pour this on top of the fruit and decorate the top and then we'll get it in the oven and get it cooking. Okay, I'm just going to pour this around on the top. Get it all out of there. And then you want to spread it around and try to get it in and among your fruit. And I'm going to put my, uh, I'm going to put, I'm going to cut these or snip them. I'm going to put a few green cherries around. And I've got my oven preheating to 350. I toasted these pecan halves, so they'll have a really good flavor on the top here. And I'm just going to put them around in a random pattern. I'm not going to try to have them solid around the top of it. Somebody might get a piece with more pecans than the next feller. There better not be any fussing. You take what you get and you don't have a fit. That's some whole ones. Somebody get a big old bite. Put one right there. Okay, as soon as the oven gets hot, I'll get it in the oven. It's going to need to cook for about um, 55 minutes. And it should be just about perfect. So we're going to see how it turns out. I'll bring up, there it goes. Okay, I'm fixing to get it in the June oven and cook it, and I'll bring y'all back to a finished pretty fruit cake pie. Okay. Y'all, this is good, and you didn't have to cook it for three or four hours wrapped in the foil or something in the oven and get you a fruit cake. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see how good it is. I want a pecan on the top of my, my bite. Let's see. Mm-mm-mm. That's good. It's not as rich. It's not as rich as a pecan pie because uh, my pecan pie has a half a cup of sugar and a cup of Cairo syrup or white corn syrup. And this had the half a cup of brown sugar, uh, and I think a half a cup of syrup. So it's not quite as sweet, but oh my goodness, it's everything that you'd want in a fruitcake cookie or a fruitcake slice of fruitcake. Very good. So y'all need to try this. 
You can taste the spices in it. If you don't like cloves, cut it down a little bit on the cloves because you can taste the cloves, the nutmeg. I can't taste the ginger for the cloves and nutmeg, but it's not overpowering. But if you just don't like cloves, and I'm not a big fan of cloves, but in this, to me, it's perfect. But anyway, it's something for you to try. And watch in your grocery stores after Christmas. They'll put, they'll mark their candied fruit down and it keeps really good in the freezer. So you could make it later on if you wanted to have one when it wasn't Christmas, maybe Easter or whatever. Just just for a one day when you want a pie that's different. Y'all let me know if you've tried this before. If you like it. If you make it, let me know what you think about it. And uh, I'll be back in a day or two with another Christmas goodie. I like to have different stuff that everybody else don't have. Makes it fun. So y'all be getting your stuff together to make your goodies. And I'll be trying to give you several more recipes this week and up until Christmas. we got a few days to go. The good Lord bless y'all and keep you and bring you right back here to Apron Strings in a day or two. Hit that little bell and be notified when I put up a new video. And just in case your little bell ain't working, just key in apron strings and hit my videos and see if there's some new ones you hadn't seen yet. That'll make me happy. It'll make my watch hours go up or watch minutes. And um, it'll sure make me smile. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And to all of the new subscribers, I am ever so grateful for you subscribing to my channel. And on Saturday, amid the video that I do, and I'm not sure what it's going to be, we're going to, uh, I'm going to show y'all what the giveaway prize is for me reaching 5,000 subscribers. And then y'all can comment, and then we'll have that random thingy come in and choose a winner. Y'all are going to want the prize. It's pretty good, I think. I'd want it. So, anyhow, I'll see y'all again. Uh, in a day or two, and we'll have something, well, it'll be Saturday, and we'll have something good, and I'll show y'all the prize that you're going to get your name drawn for, and somebody's going to be a lucky winner. 